Hi, this is Dr. O'Connor. Welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. Today I'm going to show you how to draw the stable chair conformations of cyclohexane. And then we'll talk about the substituted cyclohexane. So first, let's go ahead and draw a chair conformer. You want to draw these two lines parallel. Bring this one over here and this one here and like so. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing in my hydrogens. I'm going to draw in the hydrogens that are pointing up. So we have three of those. And then we have three hydrogens that point down. And right here they are. And these are called the axial positions. And then I have to draw in my other six hydrogens. I'm going to have three hydrogens that are going to point away from the ring. So like so. What I did was I traced this. This goes down, up, down. These are equatorial positions and they always point away from the ring. Okay, let's do another one that points down. So trace this. It's down, up, down. Okay, and then this one here, we look at the side here. We go ahead and draw a line parallel there. And then the three that point up would be this one, this one, and this one. So here we go up, down, up. Remember, you're drawing them away from the ring. Up, down, up. And then this one here, if draw a line parallel to the side of the ring. So here we have our hydrogens in both axial and equatorial positions. Now, as we know, the most stable uh, conformer of cyclohexane is the chair conformer. So cyclohexane rapidly interconverts between its two stable chair conformers. And again, this is strictly due to rotation about all of the carbon-carbon single bonds. So let's draw this. Uh, this interconversion, by the way, is called a ring flip. This time, I'll draw these two lines parallel this way. Okay. Bring this down like so. Yeah, like that. This is a little longer. And then down like this. Now, what I need to do is number my carbons. We number the carbons only to show the positions. So you can number them starting with any carbon. Any carbon can be number one. Just make sure you're consistent, especially when we get to the substituted cyclohexane. So I'm going to make this one number one, this one number two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so in this ring flip, what happens is this carbon here, this carbon becomes number one. So this is my carbon number one. And then this flips up like so, so this becomes carbon number four, okay? Also, our hydrogens that were in the equatorial positions now become axial. So I'm going to go ahead and draw these in. And our hydrogens that were in, in the axial positions now become equatorial. I'll draw these the same way, down, up, down and down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, and here, okay? And then I would just number the rest of them as, this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, it doesn't matter how you number them just so that you're consistent. So it turns out that here both of these conformations have the same energy. Now let's take a look at a substituted cyclohexane, um, maybe just methyl cyclohexane. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw the methyl group on carbon number one here. Again, it doesn't matter how you number these carbons. Okay, and then of course the hydrogen there would be like so. So here the hydrogen is pointing up 
and here our methyl group is pointing down. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the ring flip. And like so. And again, I numbered my carbons. This was one, two, three, four, five, six. So now this becomes carbon number one. This one here becomes carbon number four. Okay. And let's go ahead. And now my methyl group, it's on carbon number one, but it's in the axial position. And of course, the hydrogen is the equatorial position. Now, it turns out that this first conformer here that I drew is the most stable as the methyl group is in an equatorial position. Okay, so the uh, larger groups, when they're in an equatorial position, that makes the conformer more stable. Here, my methyl group is in an axial position, so it is not as stable as this one. So this ring flip here, okay, I'm just going to draw my arrows like sh so to show which is more stable. So most of the methyl cyclohexane molecules are going to be in this chair conf conformation here, the more stable one. Okay, and we talked about that. That's because when you have larger substituents in axial positions, then there are interactions with the other axial substituents that causes the molecule to become less stable. So most of them are going to be in this conformation here. All right, so let's take a look at a dye substitute, a cyclohexane. I'm going to go ahead and draw this. I'm going to have a methyl group here. And I'll put a methyl group here. So we know that the name of this would be, we have carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, or I could go 1, 2, 3, 4. We have a methyl group on carbons 1 and 4, so this is 1, 4, dimethyl, cyclohexane. Okay, let's go ahead and draw the chair conformer for this. So here we go. And this will be carbon one, and of course this will be carbon four here, okay? And so I'll go ahead and draw my methyl group. Um, I'll draw it in this equatorial position. And I'll go ahead and draw it this way. Okay. So here I have these two methyl groups. They're in equatorial positions, but one is pointing up and one is pointing down. So they're on opposite sides of the ring. This would be my trans isomer. Okay, these are geometric isomers, um, cis trans isomers. They have same atoms. The atoms are all connected in the same order. However, their spatial arrangements are different. Let me show you. So I can draw, also draw this like so. Again, I've got carbon number uh, one. I'll go ahead and keep my methyl group right here, okay? And here's carbon number four. I have no choice but to put my methyl group here. So here, they're both pointing down and they're on the same side of the ring. This would be my cis isomer. Of the two, the trans isomer is the most stable. That's because the methyl groups are in the equatorial positions. Now, notice when I first gave you the structure, okay, you had no idea how these methyl groups were oriented. So let me redraw this. Okay. So in this case here, I'm going to put a wedge dash here. 
and of course I don't know if you can see that I'm gonna put the solid wedge here okay now remember the solid wedge means it's pointing out of the paper okay so this methyl group here would be pointing up here the dashed wedge means that it's going through the paper to the back so this one here would point down so this is up that is down so let's go ahead now and draw this okay and so we have the methyl group so we have a 1 4 okay it doesn't matter 1 4 I'll just go ahead and draw this one going down okay and then this one I'll draw going up okay so from this here you would have been able to tell me that this is the trans up here all you could do was realize that there were two substituents and they could either be on opposite sides of the ring as in the trans or the same side of the ring as in the cis so you would have drawn the two and here though it's very obvious both methyl groups are on opposite sides of the ring so in this case we have the trans 1 4 dimethyl cyclohexane and let me do one more example here and so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this substituent here and a substituent here okay and I would ask you is this the cis or is this the trans isomer well both this substituent this one's pointing up this one's pointing up they're both on the same side of the ring so this would be the cis in this case here let's see I might have something not a very good ring let's say I have something like this What about this one? Again, they're both pointing down. This is a cis. In this case, we have one pointing up, one pointing down. They're on opposite sides. So this is my trans. Let's do one example here. Let me clear this. Here we're being asked which one which is more stable okay um, cis 1 ethyl two methyl cyclohexane or trans one ethyl two methyl cyclohexane okay so I'm just going to use the same numbering system I've been using I'll start this as carbon one two three four and so on let me go ahead and or draw in the uh, bonds here so it's carbon number one um, here we're going to have this one I'll bring this down so again we're going to draw the cis and that means that both substituents must be on the same side of the ring so I have a choice here I can draw my ethyl group to where it's in an axial position and my methyl group in an equatorial position or I think it would be best if we put the ethyl group in an equatorial position and our methyl group here in an axial position so in a case like this when you have to have one group in an axial and the other one in an equatorial position it's best to have the larger group in the equatorial position so this would be my cis 1 ethyl 2 methyl cyclohexane and now let's go ahead and draw the trans so we'll do the same thing here draw this and 
again, not too great of a ring here, but we get it. So the trans now, we need them on opposite sides of the ring. Okay, so let's get these bonds in here. And I could draw this like so. And then this would come down like this. And then on carbon number two, again, I have an axial position and this position. So for the trans, again, I'm going to keep my um, ethyl group in the equatorial position. And this is pointing down and my methyl group then will go here um, again in an equatorial position and it's pointing up so we have the ethyl group pointing down the methyl group pointing up they're both in equatorial positions so here we have the trans and since both substituents are in equatorial positions the trans would be more stable than the cis. In the cis, we have the ethyl group in an equatorial, the methyl group in an axial position, which makes it less stable than the trans isomer that has both substituents in the equatorial positions.